Hello and welcome to the latest episode of a brand new web series from MEP Middle East. I'm editor Tom Oxby and joining us today is Griffin Director Hassan Yunis. Hassan is here to discuss his role within HVAC membership and lobbying body Ashray's Falcon Chapter and how COVID has impacted the organization's direction. Hassan, thank you for being here. I hope we find you safe and well at this time. Thank you, Tom. Yes, all well. Hope everything is well at your end too. Yes, yes. No complaints from me at the minute. Um, listen, let's get straight into it. Has there ever been a busier time for Ashray than 2020? And what can you tell us about the uptake of the COVID-19 resource guides that have been collated to aid individuals as well as companies through this time? Yeah, I mean, it's been a challenging time for Ashray, just like any other organization uh, from different angles. First of all, the summer meeting that used to be, uh, I mean, uh, face-to-face -face meeting was done on a virtual platform. It was, was good, but still, I mean, we faced difficulties, uh, you know, different people from different areas trying to come together on a, on a similar platform because we used to be, let's say, in Chicago or in, or in other places in the U.S. and everyone would be there physically, whereas in, at, at this point, we had to uh, connect online. You need to wake up sometimes at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. To, to connect to a meeting. Um, this is from one side. From the other side, I think from a membership point of view, people also um, have been hit in terms financially and uh, that, that did kind of hurt the membership numbers. Uh, nevertheless, ASHRAE, uh, you know, maybe one of the few organizations worldwide that really uh, got an epidemic uh, task force together and they, they hit on the coronavirus uh, the best way they could. They, we put out or actually put out some uh, guidance uh, documents on different typologies of buildings. So we have uh, on schools, on universities, uh, hospitals, residential offices. We tried to uh, tell uh, and, and explain to the public and to the uh, owners, engineers, facility managers what needs to be done to reduce the uh, possibility of transmission of the virus, especially from an airborne transmission uh, point of view. Uh, I think you're aware that WHO has been resistant to uh, look into that portion, but uh, we know that uh, this has been uh, or being revised at the moment. At least ASHRAE's stance was from day one that this could be airborne, so let's do whatever we can to make sure that we are protected uh, from the airborne transmission. So these guidances are available, they're all for free. Uh, I would advise everyone to uh, just Google ASHRAE COVID-19, go to that website, download the documents. There are also some available free courses on uh, UVGI, uh, ultraviolet uh, uh, as well, and, and some other courses that are, that are there for free. Um, also, ASHRAE has been, uh, at least for the Global Training Center here in Dubai, we've launched uh, um, a series of courses at really low rates, like 50% discounted or even more because of this current situation and because we understand people uh, might have been hit financially. So uh, we are running courses. Uh, today, actually, I'm giving a course afternoon on commercial building energy audits. We've done one on healthcare. Uh, there's one coming on energy management, commissioning, uh, ultraviolet uh, data centers. So uh, I would encourage everyone to look into that. They're really discounted. I don't think it's going to happen again. Uh, so it's really good opportunity for everyone to uh, uh, get on that train and, and get um, uh, and check these courses and uh, subscribe. Mm, no doubt. Uh, I'll be used to be going straight there if they if they haven't already. Um, Hassan, you you're a course instructor for Ashray. Um, so what has this pandemic meant in terms of your focus objectives? and just generally how you deliver information since we're, we're communicating in so many new and innovative, innovative ways in the last few months. Yeah, I mean, from, from that end, uh, uh, we've uh, created a course uh, specifically for COVID-19 and, and we've de delivered that course, I think a month ago, uh, it was myself and Frank from the UK. We've, uh, uh, Frank did most of the course. I did the review at some points for the Middle East, and we've uh, we've done that course. Uh, I think one month ago. Maybe we will be uh, running that course again. Um, so, from another end, the chapters also have been uh, given a lot of uh, webinars. Uh, you know, previously we used to mainly um, uh, do uh, live events, but this year I think 
Asher has done like hundreds and hundreds of webinars all over the world. And since it's all online, everyone can be connected. Uh, so from a, uh, 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 what we call it techn technology transfer point of view or sharing information, I think we've done a lot. And I think other organizations are doing the same. So this year has been bad from, from a lot of points, but from a knowledge sharing has been really great because it, it made it uh, accessible for everyone to get that knowledge and everyone was giving knowledge almost for free. Uh, and, and that helped, I think, a lot uh, of development to happen. Mm -hmm. So oh, you've mentioned there that ASHRAE has chapters all over the world. How, how imperative during a, during a crisis has it been to be able to, to turn to one country and say, oh, you're at this phase of the pandemic. How are you addressing this? Have you thought about X? Have you thought about Y? How crucial has that knowledge share been? Um, I mean, from for our region, which is region at large that covers uh, the MENA region and covers India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, uh, and some other countries, we have periodical meetings. Unfortunately, also, we were supposed to have a live meeting in September, and this has been pushed back to see if we can have it live in South Africa or we'll keep it also virtual. But yes, we are having um, periodical meetings discussing, you know, ASHRAE business and as well COVID-19 and how can we help. And we've put uh, webinars for different parts of the world um, from uh, places where the pandemic has hit uh, and we had more knowledge on, on what to do and what works or what not works, what doesn't work. So yes, I think uh, we've, we've done a lot when it comes to that. There's been a lot of knowledge sharing between the different chapters. As you know, we have um, chapters almost in every country in the world and um, um, our focus is mainly on the RAL which is the region at large but we've seen cooperation between all chapters around the world. And the, the evidence is clear how much of a, an important role your research resources can play in, in the recovery. Um, do you, do you think this this crisis, uh, you know, one of the silver lines, linings is it's underlined the importance of organizations such as ASHRAE and do you think you will have a significant role to play in the years to come as as these new uh, these new standards are made into policy and legislation? Yes, I think uh, especially because we've seen that the WHO response is a little bit uh, is a bit slow um so they they take things maybe because they they have much more responsibility uh and they take things slowly and they want to study them uh, more and more and then before they make up their minds so definitely ashray and other organizations have been uh, showing that you know that you can get back to them and and rely on the information that they publish and ASHRAE has been always um, uh, there when it comes to healthcare. So we, we have a very um, uh, great team working on healthcare. Uh, we have many publications on that. We have Standard 170. We have the publication on, on uh, hospitals. And uh, we have a uh, course on, on, on healthcare. So definitely, I think with um, the focus now being on well being, uh, ASHRAE and other organizations will be. Um, will be actually uh, on the forefront of this uh, engagement and will uh, shift uh, our standards towards more well-being, focusing more on, on that aspect uh, compared to before. Brilliant. Good stuff. Hassan, that's uh, all we've got time for uh, for today's episode. I'd like to extend my sincere thanks uh, to you once again for sharing your time and expertise with our viewers. Thank you, Tom. Stay safe. Take care. And of course, to our viewers, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next episode of MEP Engineers.